of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Good morning, my brothers and sisters, and thank you for joining us on this 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We thank you for joining us this morning and invite you to participate as fully as possible. We are uh, trying out a new technology this morning, so we ask you also if you experience any issues or problems with audio or video or any comments. Please put those in the comment side of Facebook. And uh, otherwise, let's roll on with our mass, brothers and sisters. Uh, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the champion of the poor and the downcast. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, through you, we are given everlasting life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be courageous in faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the, in the highest, and, and on earth peace to the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like the mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, and probe mind and heart. Let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world. Though sin is not accounted when there is no law, but death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, 
who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord. And you also will testify. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I heard an interesting conversation on Catholic Radio this past week. They were talking about fear of the Lord and describing it as a state of awe or wonder and respect. And the guest was saying that when we choose not to fear the Lord, we are choosing instead to fear a thousand other things in this life. But if we subject ourselves to our, if we subject ourselves uh, to God and his rule of love, well then all those other fears, they become pretty petty, pretty minor. And as I reflected on that, I, I thought, you know, that's, that's pretty true. That's what we all, that we all choose the fears that we let control us. And that often our choices are unfounded or they're based on a lack of trust. I remember teaching my kids to swim and I would stand in the pool and they would be on the edge of the pool and I would try to coax them to jump into the water. You know, I will get you, I will catch you, come on, I've got you. And the more times that they would take that plunge and realize Dad was there to catch them, well, the more they trusted and the less they feared. And so it is with the Christian life. The more that we trust in the Lord, the less we have to fear. Today we encounter Jeremiah in our first reading, who, having delivered God's unpopular message, he's sounding a little paranoid. He, he's hearing these voices. He says, they're out to get me. And you know, I think many of us can maybe emphasize, empathize with Jeremiah. You know, we would like to stand up for our faith, so we say. But yet we hear these voices of the culture making fun of us, belittling our faith. And so often we, too, are maybe a little paranoid, at least reserved in sharing the good news with those around us. We choose to fear what others think of us more than what God thinks of us. But Jeremiah, he puts his trust in the Lord, calling him a mighty champion. And that overcomes the other fears, and it gives him the courage to be true to the Lord. 
In our response to the reading, Psalm 69, there's more that we can identify with. If we have lived our Catholic faith, we also may be insulted and feel shame by the chronic disrespect for God's name and his moral law. And we too can feel like an outcast, even within our own families. I love being with my kids, my adult kids, but sometimes, you know, I feel really awkward or out of place when the conversations go directions of the world and their values are not what God would choose for us. The author of the Psalms, he trusts in God's great love. And as we beseech, he prays for answers. So how do you deal with this? When you are in this world, but because of your faith you do not feel like you are of the world, which fears do you let control you? Fear no one, Jesus says to the twelve disciples in the Gospel. If we set our priorities first on the soul and eternal life rather than on the body and the things of this world, then we have nothing to fear. I know, it's easier said than done, right? But that's why God sent His only Son into our world as an example to show us that it can be done. And today, Jesus also assures us of our value where even the, heads of, even the hairs on our heads are counted. But, uh, you know, this should still give us courage and confidence, knowing that our Father in Heaven sees our greatness and our destiny, even if we don't. Spend time this week asking yourself some tough questions. Do I see myself as valuable, as lovable, like God sees me? Do I fear offending my Lord or do I run around trying to control the other worldly fears that I have chosen? Do I acknowledge Jesus before others in how I live and act and speak so that he will acknowledge me on Judgment Day? And do I trust, really trust, in God's promise? May this Eucharist, hearing God's word today and reflecting on it, give us the confidence that we need to live a life that is expected of us as Christians, so that we, individually and as a community, may bring Christ to this world. My brothers and sisters, as we strive to bring Christ to this world, let us together profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, His, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We are precious to God, and with trust in God's goodness, let us turn to Him now in prayer. For all who are afflicted with COVID-19, for our emergency and medical personnel who serve the common good, for all who are struggling financially, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have experienced or live under the threat of violence, whether from neighborhood turmoil, terrorism, or war, for God's peace to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our fathers, who have given us life and love, for all who have shown us a father's love, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Zinkula, as he celebrates his third anniversary as our bishop, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered for this Mass, secure in God's love for us, and for all who live in fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of vocations, especially for the Diocese of Davenport, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for our Mass intention today, for Lloyd Stout, and for those we have promised to pray for, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, we remember our fathers who have died and for Ali Goeringer who has died recently and for all who mourn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, in the gospel Jesus urges us to be fearless in the life of discipleship. Hear our prayers that your peace may reign in the hearts of all who worship you, and that this peace may spread through all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by this action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let's offer those near us a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The eyes, eyes of all who look, look to you, O Lord, and, and you, you give, give them, them their food in due season. season. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, if you're not already, for a few words from our pastor. I have to say, Father Dan, that last year when I was scared to go off the high dive, I was expecting you to be down there, you know, I'll catch you, so. <laughs> From Bishop Sekula, I have determined that it is safe to resume the public celebration of Mass in the Diocese of Davenport starting on Monday, June 22nd, tomorrow, with some restrictions. I commend the faithful for their patience as we pray and work through the challenges presented by the current pandemic. And so as we start public mass tomorrow, it is going to look just a little bit different. There's no singing. There will be no missiles in the pew. So if you have a word among us or a magnificat or give us this day, you might want to bring it with you if you would like to follow along. There will be no shaking of hands at the sign of peace. Um, among some other things. So Mass is going to look a little bit different. We're also going to have a different Mass schedule starting tomorrow. Um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Mass will be celebrated at 8 a.m. Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Saturday at 4 p.m. 
and Sunday at 8 and 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. At the start of our reopening, we will be having Mass at St. John Church only. And the reason for that is, is a few. But first of all, it is our biggest church. We have more pews available at St. John's than we do our other three churches. It will also be easier for us to live stream the Mass from one location instead of moving all the equipment from church to church to church. Um, also will help us a little bit um, keep a control on um, disinfecting and cleaning. Once restrictions are eased at the direction of the diocese, we will start to reopen our other churches as well. We, will, we are still acting very cautiously and it will take some time to get back to the ways that we once did things. We're asking everyone to wear a mask, to wash their hands before coming, to social distance, and to use hand sanitizer. There are some new procedures in place, so please be patient. You will need to call the parish office to let us know what mass you will be coming to. And that at the beginning is both for weekday and weekend masses. Please let the usher seat you when you come into the church. We will be using one entrance only, the southwest door, the one that's by the restroom. The ushers will also let you out, pew by pew, at the end of Mass. We're asking that you please exit right away um, so that we can start the clock. We have to wait an hour um, for everyone, once everyone is out of the church, to start the cleaning procedure. Um, if you want to talk, we're asking that you do that outside. We do have 25 parking spots available in the upper parking lot for those who wish to stay in their cars. Um, if you are attending Mass um, inside of church, we're asking that you park either behind the church hall or in the parking lot across the street. We will continue the live stream um, the Mass and we'll also have an FM station if you park your car um, in the parking lot that you can listen to. And communion will be brought to your vehicle um, during Mass. Uh, we're in new territory. So we ask for your patience, your flexibility. And I know that we're asking you for a lot. And you might think, is it worth even coming back to Mass? And I'm going to give you one reason why it is. The Eucharist. The Eucharist is essential to our faith. And so I encourage you, if you feel comfortable, to come to Mass either from the parking lot or inside, so you can receive the body of Christ. I speak on behalf of Father Dan and myself. Thank you. Thank you so much for your faithfulness these past three months. Um, I joked with Father Dan that when I was in seminary that they did not give us a course in the fourth year entitled Pandemic 101. And Father Dan said he did not have that either. So thank you. Thank you for being with us. We know you had a lot of choices out there. So it will be good to get back together again as a family of faith. God bless everybody, and we do invite you, we're going to sign off, but then come right back on. Um, just um, one of the things we asked at the beginning was to send the pictures in, and this has been a great comfort to the both of us, especially when it was only the two of us in the chapel, to see um, your faces as our parishioners, as the body of Christ. And so we're going to show the pictures one last time, and we're hoping, um, it's going to take us a few days for this, but we're going to move the pictures upstairs into the church as well for a little while. God bless everybody. Thank you for your attention today. And today is also a special day for our fathers out there.
uh, for our fathers who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them. And for fathers who have died, that God may bring them into the joys of his kingdom. For all these things we pray today and give celebration for our dads. So fathers, any of you that are fathers, grandfathers that are watching, if you could please stand, and we as your priestly people, uh, if you are with them, please extend your hands over them as we give them this blessing on this special day. God our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you today, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.